In today's video, I'm doing a recent keynote in Nashville, Tennessee. I did this with Carrie Ann and my partner, Dennis Sanders, incredible people. I've been doing this Nashville event every year for, I think, the last four years in a row. And it's just a great, great time. Every time I go up there, there's about 400 agents in the room um, every time. And uh, I just really break down the market. And I talk about the, the opportunity right now that you should be uh, really taken advantage of. This is one of the ones that uh, my daughter walks up on stage with me. So um, the last few, I hadn't been able to get her to do that. She's been kind of like, I don't want to do it this time, but she did it for like three or four different speeches. So hopefully I'll get her, uh, get her back on stage soon. But anyway, enjoy this one and let me know if you have any questions in the comments. Can you imagine being in the mindset to believe that to the level that you put it out on, on YouTube? that the market's about to explode. But when I see a, a market where transactions retract, that's just telling me demand is building. Demand is brewing, pent up demand is happening. That's why most people fail in the business. They just, they don't go all in because they're scared they're gonna fail, they're scared they're gonna waste time on something that's not gonna work, so they don't put everything they got into it and end up quitting. Uh, sphere of influence, referrals, Circle prospecting for sale by owners expires. Can anybody tell me a lead generation source that you convert that you don't have to talk to somebody? I'll sell this house one day and upgrade to something else and my, my, my kids are gonna buy houses. Everybody I know is gonna buy a house. Makes you have a different tone when you talk to them because you feel comfortable because you've perceived in your mind that this is something different when it's not. And if you would take the leads that you're scared to call and pretend like they're the leads that you're not scared to call, you'd have the same result. The very talented, the man, the legend, the one, the only. Look at you, sister. You got your notepad. She's spread it. He's going to leave you with lots of good nuggets today. Lots of good nuggets. We're going to open the curtain. Please help me welcome the very talented Ricky Carew. my daughter <laughs> she had to come out y'all show her how it's done all right one more time let's make some noise <laughs> what slides there we go cool 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 good to see you guys it's so good to be back in nashville yeah okay so catch you guys up year one let's see what what was it where did i go year one that was where, no, 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 but oh, oh, I know what it was. I know what it was. VIP guys, what's up? I, uh, it was hot chicken. I had to go have the hot chicken. Yeah, I went to Hattie Beast. Yeah. And then last year, Murfreesboro, let's see, grilled cheesery. And then they shut grilled cheesery down, like right after that. I was like, I want to help y'all get some business. It didn't work out too good. But this year, okay, where's the best breakfast place to go in Nashville? Nope. Nope. Yeah. Okay. Look. Cracker Merrill. That's Alabama. Okay, so I had this thing called chronic bacon. Where's that at? You said it. Biscuit love. That place is incredible. Have you guys been to Biscuit Love? 
Give it up if you've been in Biscuit Law. Okay, 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 sorry. All right, so today, as I run through my presentation here of what's going on with the market, right? Why you guys need to be confident in the market and confident in yourself to go all in on your business, your career, and the market itself. I'm also gonna tell you exactly what you need to be doing day to day, right? What you need to be doing, why you need to be doing it, and how you need to be doing it to absolutely crush it. But every time I say something that makes you feel like, aha, I want you to say all together, biscuit love. <laughs> and give me some biscuit love. So let's try it one time, all right? Biscuit love on three. One, two, three. Okay, that was kind of weak, but I felt the love. All right, when you guys hear the word Alabama, what, roll tide, okay. What, not the football team, but the state. What's the first thing that, what's the first image that comes to mind outside of boo or roll tide? Or Bammer. Dogs? That's Georgia. You're I said Alabama I said Alabama. I said Alabama. Okay. What is it? Derek Henry. That's all you need to know right there. Derek Twinkle Toes Henry. That dude was a beast. Okay. I was in New York several months ago, and I said, what's the first thing you guys think of when you hear the word Alabama? You know what they said? Mud. Mud. I was like, all right. I was in Orlando, and I said, what do you guys think of when you, see, when you hear the word Alabama? And they said, civil rights. I was like, hey, guy, this is not going in the direction I want to go in here. You guys trying to get me canceled right off the bat. But then when I'm in these places and I start talking about Alabama, and then I show them this picture of actually where I'm from in Alabama, where I grew up, uh, where I live, where I've sold real estate for 21 years, they're like, wow, where, what is that? Where is that? How is that? So all of you guys being Nashville, you know, eight hour drive from here, I'm sure. You guys knew about this, right? Okay, anybody not know that we had in beautiful beaches of the world? All right, great. It, I've sold condos in just about every building on the beach, multiple. If you guys need a good referral agent to like send business to, like I'm your guy. Any referrals you got down there, I'll be happy to take. But long story short, because most of you guys, how many people are following me online? Anybody not follow me? That'll be a lot easier. They're living under a rock. <laughs> Long story short, I got in when I was 20. It was 2002. Made a lot of money. The market blew up. Lost it all flipping houses. Went back to roofing houses. Worked on an oil rig. Was bankrupt sleeping in my car. Got back in in 2008 and took everything I learned from that to absolutely crush it. 2014, I was selling 100 properties a year. And I'll kind of dive into more of that as I go through the presentation here. But what I want you to think about is, what were we all doing on April 28th, 2020? Social distancing. It was actually kind of a level above that. We we're actually forced to stay confined in our houses. In a very, let's just say, that it was one of the scariest times in our life probably, right? Like we didn't know what was going to happen. We didn't. We had no idea if our family or even we were going to die from this thing or where it was going to go with the economy or our jobs and all that stuff. So much uncertainty, right? Can you, can you, can I take you back to that moment in your mind for just a second to remember what that felt like? Meanwhile, I make a video that's right here that's still on YouTube that says, why real estate will surge as the economy opens. This was right as the economy was fixing to reopen. They reopened a lot of it May 1st. Uh, but this, is, this gives you a little preview inside of my mind. When the, all this uncertainty is happening, I'm thinking the market's fixing to explode. Can you imagine being in the mindset to believe that to the level that you put it out on, on YouTube, that the market's about to explode? 
And then what happened? Now, why, how did I realize that? And number one, how many of you guys are a good test taker? Educational guesser, like, you don't know the answer, but you, you're just good at guessing the right answer? That's me. How do you think I passed all the real estate exams and stuff? <laughs> but I've been around so long and I've seen so many market shifts that I can educationally guess what the market's doing and I'm pretty close. But when I see a, a market where transactions retract, that's just telling me demand is building. Demand is brewing. Pent up demand is happening. So whenever you encounter a, this is step one here. Remember, my goal today is to help you become incredibly confident in the market. Because a lot of people are scared of the market. The market's going to do this today. What am I going to do? It doesn't matter. So my job today is to help you become incredibly confident in the market, your career, short and long term to where you can go all in. Because that's why most people fail in the business. They just, they don't go all in because they're scared they're going to fail. They're scared they're going to waste time on something that's not going to work. So they don't put everything they got into it and end up quitting. Because you're not going to succeed if you don't put everything you got into it. So just the big punchline is put everything you got into this or it's not gonna work. And there's no reason not to because it's never gonna go to zero. So when I saw that we had 80%, 20% less transactions, 20% pending deals during that 45 day shutdown, I said, whoa, we're fixing to have an explosion. And then I saw stimulus happen. <laughs> Are you gonna print money and throw it on the table? This, is, this thing's really about to take off like a rocket. It wasn't hard for me to realize that. Okay. July, August, September. What was I saying? What was my message during this past fall? Yep. And that we're about to see multiple offers again. And I was like, you guys need to go all in right this second to build your influence so that when this next wave hits, you have increased your market share to take advantage of the wave. Everyone, when the market slowed down, should have been going all in with building the influence in their market, talking to property owners, creating relationships, putting them in your database, remarketing to them, and building your influence larger and larger and larger. What all you should be doing right now, that's your job. But man, when, the mar when, when you can play your job against the market and see opportunities that we saw like last fall, you can really explode your business and take advantage of these swings. What happened? Are we seeing multiple offers? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Raise your hand if you see multiple offers in the market. Okay. Raise your hand if you don't see multiple offers in the market. We're getting brave souls that just basically want to admit that I'm not in the market. Okay. All right. Just a month ago. And I actually said this in a video about 30 days before that. I said, I'm just going to throw this out there, guys. We hit bottom. By the way, can I get some biscuit love real quick? Okay, 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 okay. Y'all are with me. I said, I think we've hit bottom here. I'm going to throw it out there. I'm going to say we hit bottom. I said it in January. I said it in February. It's simple economics, guys. Supply and demand. If you don't have any supply, how can prices go down? Prices can go down. There are some things that can happen. Interest rates could shoot to 10, 12%. That would do something. But we'll dig into interest rates in just a second. So I say, hit bottom. What do we see? The blue line there is prices, median home prices in America. Where is it? Bottomed out, 344. It's at 361, and the 361 is higher than we started for the year. So we're positive on the year, right this second, price-wise. It's not hard to realize when you don't have any supply that we're going to be in this situation. It's just an educated guess. I'm not telling you know what's going to happen. I'm just saying I can, I can guess based on what I see and in in, in, from watching the market for 21 years where we're going. Now, if you see the blue line compared to 2022, what are we? negative on the year year over year okay you guys see that you understand we're positive on the year but we're negative year over year 
which that's kind of crazy when you look at that chart to see how close it's kind of getting to 2022. That's insane. Now, existing home sales. Did we all see this report? We had a 14.5% uh, surge in existing home sales. Okay. Now, prices are up for the year. They're down year over year, and we have 14.5% increase in existing home sales. What's Wall Street Journal going to do with that data? They're going to say home prices fell in February for the first time in 11 years. This is some scary times, guys, right? And then at the, 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 the PowerPoint wouldn't do what I wanted to highlight that, that uh, subtitle. So they're saying home prices fell in February for the first time in 11 years, right? And then the subtitle, right, a little small print says, U.S. sales of existing homes jumped 14.5%. What the hell are you trying to tell me, Mr. Wall Street Journal? That's what we say in Alabama. We get loud and stuff. What are you trying to tell me? I don't know what you're trying to tell me. Is the market good or bad? Now, we're starting to see some articles come out from the media that prices are up right from the bottom because it's undeniable. I've looked in every single market I could, and they're all up from the bottom, and 95% of them are up for the year. Is that not amazing? Now, it depends on who you're talking to. Here's Realtor.com. They say we're still up year over year, 6%. So it just depends on who you're talking to. And the media likes to pick and choose what data points from what organizations they want to use to try to manipulate their, their articles to create clicks. They're click-driven. But the market is doing phenomenal. Just think about this. Now, this is Nashville. Prices. Okay. Um, this was supplied by my guy, Dennis Sanders. Thank you, Dennis. Give it up for Dennis. And also, can we get real loud for Carrie Ann real quick? Isn't this of Den amazing? Look at prices here in Nashville. We're down from the high, but we're up from the bottom. Where's it going to go from here? Is this a false rally? Are things, are things giving us a false sense of security and it's going to drop? I don't know. I can't tell you what's going to happen. I can just tell you what I think is going to happen. I can tell you what's happening right now. Never tell your client what you think is going to happen. Ever. Because if they base their decision on what you think is going to happen, and they make this huge financial decision based on what you think is going to happen, and then that doesn't come true, and they end up in a bad position because you told them what you thought would happen and acted so confident about it, even though you don't know shit. Biscuit love. Giving me some biscuit love. Then you're going to be in a bad spot. Always talk to your clients about what's happened and where it is right now. Don't predict the future to your clients. You can predict it in your mind so you can try to work the market to to create the, the largest business, but don't use that information to try to sway your clients to do something because that could end up very, very badly. She likes Biscuit Love. Biscuit Love is a man. See, now I can't stop thinking about it. Okay. Let's talk about interest rates. Okay, what drives interest rates? What's up? Yep. Yeah. So this is a chart with inflation and 10-year uh, and, and treasuries, right? 10-year treasuries, actually, there's always a spread of about 1.75 to 2%. All right, historically, if you look at a 30-year chart, um, it's really closely correlated. Right now, it's about a three-point spread. Why is that? Because it's very investor-driven. They know with the higher rates, when rates come down, people are going to refinance. So they know they're not going to have these loans very long, so they have to make something in the short term. It makes total sense. So there's so much downward pressure on rates uh, correlating it to the 10-year treasury, not to mention inflation is doing what right now? It's easing down, right? There's a couple of rocky reports. It's not going to be all just boom, but May 10th is going to be big. 
right? All the reports are going to are going to continue to be really favorable for mortgage rates, which aren't controlled by the Fed fund rate. Everybody knows that, right? Do you have to break this down? Okay. So we know we're going to have, right, and NAR came out and said once rates hit 6%, that gives us another 3 million buyers in the country that can afford, okay? Like everything is lining up and there's no inventory. We're headed for a recession though, right? Who thinks we're headed for a recession? We could. Doesn't matter. What happens during recessions? Normally rate and mortgage rates come down. Bring a recession on, right? What do prices do during recessions? Don't, don't take a picture of me doing this, by the way. Yes, <laughs> straight cancel. Real estate agent, <laughs> okay. Prices go up during recessions. The only time it didn't was in 2008, and that was driven, that recession was driven by real estate. So guys, number one, before we go any further, like how confident can you be in the, one of the most re resilient industry and market in, 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 in the history of the world? Never goes to zero, washes it during recessions, and let's say that we do have another 2008 where prices go down 50%. How easy would it be to sell properties at 50% less? Biscuit love. So easy. So think about this. If the market blows up, right? Prices escalate. You're going to crush it. If prices go down, they're going to be so easy to sell. You're going to crush it. Does everybody understand this? So why can't we be confident in the market and just go all in on it? What are we, what are we holding back for? Why are we second guessing ourselves? Why are we second guessing the market? Go, 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 go. We only have one life. Don't you want to get to the end of the rainbow sooner? Let's talk about the real housing crisis though. This is where the doom and gloom starts to happen. Just kidding. I'm going to I'm going to let this digest for just a second. Really sink in. This is total housing inventory, houses for sale, pending and active listings. Going back to 1980. Has anyone ever seen this data? Look at what you see during the 80s. Two to three million homes for sale. In the 80s! When there were, it was, there were, it was 30% less population. 30% less uh, existing homes. And you had two to three million houses for sale? Look at 2008, got up to four million. Where are we at right now? A million. And when you take pending deals out of, the, out of there, we're at about 550,000 in the country. What's going to happen? I don't know. But I can tell you that we're in such a strong position when it comes to this in terms of just equity in terms of just prices do we have other issues yes can we find our buyers the house they want are we having to compete yeah there's other issues going on but as far as securing our investment and in equity we in good shape <laughs> let's let's zoom in you see the last 10 years there let's zoom into it look at this now, what do you see that the that inventory does every year? Shoots to the moon and drops like a rock every year. Not even like this. Boop, boop, boop. It's Alabama that. Boop, 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 boop. And you see where we are now. And if you realize in 2021, the year of the boom, the year of the multiple offers, the year of the 100,000 over asking prices, inventory went up during that year. Everybody wants to talk about how inventory just got to the root to the moon in 2022. Where? Like, yeah, it got back and caught up with 2021. But inventory also went up in 2021 as it does every year. You see this? 
so seasonal. Every year, up and down, up and down. This is a chart that shows 2022, 2021, 22, and 23. The orange line is 2021. Okay, you see 2022, it did go up. The curve was a little bigger than normal, right? But all it did was get us caught up with 2021. You see where we started at the same place? And now, ladies and gentlemen, we're lower. Lower than we were in 2021. Remember that year? We have less inventory than we had during that year, right this second. Another thing interesting is when you look at 2021, which is the orange, what happened between February and August? Inventory went up. And this was the year that we sold 6 million properties and there was nothing for sale and you were competing against 20 offers and having to go 100,000 over asking price and still not winning the bid. Inventory went up. Just putting this into perspective for you. Can I get some biscuit love? Louder. Louder. I want to feel the love. The top three lines are 2018, 19, 17, 18, 19. This is inventory again. Just continuing to, to, to draw the, the picture here for you so you really get it. This is minus the pending deals. This is active. That's uh, 17, 18, 19. Then you see 20. 20 kind of started out a little lower, but that's the one that took us a leg down. Look where we are right now. 562,000. Look how far we are from just 2,000. 17, 18, 19, not to mention 2015 and 2010. And how are we going to get back to even 17, 18, 19? Does anybody have any idea how we're going to get back inventory wise to 17, 18, 19? Not to mention where we need to be, which is about double 2017, 18, 19. How are we going to do it? Built, builders are down 30%. They couldn't keep up in 2016, 17, 17 18, 19. When they were at full capacity, they couldn't keep up. Hey, 2021, which is the line right under the 2023, that was the year builders were at full capacity. They were built, they had 6 million sales. They, that's when they were really crushing it. And look where we were inventory-wise. You think builders are going to take us back up? Mm -hmm. And honestly, I don't know. This is fun to me. Here's Nashville, and this this is uh, this helps you see it on like a straight line inventory. And if you see 2023, the end of 2022, and look at 2018, you see that hump of 18 and where we are now is pretty much at the same level. And where the chart ends and begins is the same level. We're right there in that 2018 range, it seems, here uh, locally there's going to be this huge recession and foreclosures are just going to be everywhere, Ricky. We're not even half of where we were pre-pandemic. Now, I'll let this one digest. We got 58% equity in our homes on average. If anybody's delinquent on their note, what do you think they're going to do? Sell and make 100000 Right? How, how, how is foreclosures going to happen at a large scale to help increase inventory when we're sitting on 50% equity and prices are going up right now? Where, how are foreclosures going to happen? By the truckloads, not. Louder. So they can hear in the back. Okay, okay. Y'all love biscuits. <laughs> What's a short sale? Short sale is where you owe more than the house is worth. That doesn't mean that people didn't buy FHA, VA loans in last June and, and July uh, for 3% down and are underwater right now. There's pro probably 300, 400,000 houses in America that are underwater that bought in June that only put 3.5% down. Okay? But those people didn't buy to sell it this year. They bought it to live there for a decade. It's not going to affect the market. We may see some stuff, but to get back where we were, I'll show this one again. Look at where we were in 2008, 9, 10. Let me show you where the equity is from 2008 to now. Fannie Mae expects to have a 4.2% decrease in sales this year. 
just through the year, January to December. Next year, 2%, 2.3, Fannie Mae. So they expect it to be a slow decline, not too much, pretty much even, a little bit lower this year and next year. Even if that happens, you see the last line, we're still up 29% from 2020 levels. Okay, if that were to happen. Who here thinks that's going to happen? Prices are going, we're up right now, year over year. I mean, not yet, we're, we're up for the year. If we take another leg down, maybe. We'll see what happens. There's got to be an oversupply, in my opinion, before we actually see that. Or interest rates have to go to the moon, right? But inventory, inflation's coming down. <laughs> like anywhere they turn, right? Existing home sellers aren't going to sell. 85% of them are sitting on less than 4%. 35% sitting on less than 3%. You know what they're doing? They want a house. They've been pent up in that house too long. They went through the pandemic, whatever they did. They ref See, a lot of these people didn't necessarily buy when rates were low. They bought three or four years ago. They refinanced when rates were low. It's like, oh, so many people. 85% have less than 4%. You know what they're doing? They are tired of their house. They're buying in the new market, and they're just renting that out because they don't want to let that rate go. They're becoming what they call accidental landlords. This is happening. This is a big thing that's happening, whereas they're upgrading, but they're not selling their existing home because they don't want to let go of that rate. It's too good, and rents are so high. There goes inventory. That looked better than that, dude. Home sold. Oh, th this is a mind blower. Look at the peaks and valleys. Look at 2021, 22, 23. You see 20 there dip down. See the little spoon shape. You see how it caught back up in 2021? Look at how you can barely see the line in a couple places. It's so identical. Is, it, is this not mind blowing to see this? How seasonal sales are? That's crazy looking at that. Every year we start out low. You know, it's just kind of coming down. Then we hit this bottom around February. It starts coming back up. And you see 2023 trying to catch up to 2020. See, it's kind of curving up a little bit. We're getting there. Are you guys as businesses really picked up over the last 60 days, 30 days? Because remember, this is closed sales. This means this stuff went under contract 30 to 60 days ago. It's closing now. So this means your business was picking up right after the first of the year. I know my, our business is picking up after the first of the year. But isn't it amazing? Look at the black line. They're all the same little peaks and valleys. Wow. Let's look at Tennessee, Nashville. Uh, same graph. Very similar. You see, the, you see the seasonalities between the years. And you see 2023 trying to catch up when I was selling like hardcore nose down didn't do social media made calls emails and postcards to make a million a year and stuff and totally focused on that goal I didn't look at any of this didn't care about it didn't know what interest rates were didn't know what sales were didn't know nothing I knew a little bit about my niche which was gulf front condos price per square foot what buildings are what what's on the market I knew that market very well I didn't know any of this I can imagine that you guys are also in somewhat like that, where you're so focused on your business, your clients, the local, your niche, whatever you're selling, and you don't really have time to take a step back and actually look at how amazing this data is. So that's what I'm here today to, to do for you, is to like say, hey, let's take a break from your business and just, can we just look at the data for a second to really instill some serious confidence so that we can leave this, this room on fire. I never looked at this, but, and I wish somebody would have sat me down and said, looky here, right? This is, the, you can kind of, this is a straight line of inventory. You see the same thing, to the moon, drop like a rock, moon, rock, moon, rock, moon, rock, moon, rock. And you see the same thing we kind of see with transactions, I'm sorry, uh, inventory, that were kind of right there in that 2018 
Uh, you know, you see the low, you see the low where we hit right now. It's kind of in line with the 2018 and 19 low. Number of sales. Talk about mortgage applications. They're worse than they were in 1994. Right? That's scary. Okay. Number one, when I see this chart, look at where we were in 2006, 7, and 8. Just for a second. Just to think about it. And look at where we were in 2021. One of the best years we ever had. What do I see? I see 2021 wasn't even half of what it was back in 2004, 5, 6, 7, 8. So we weren't even at a high. During that 2021 boom, we weren't even at a high with mortgage applications. Nowhere near it. So that almost just negates this entire piece of data for me. It's like, okay, what, what does this do for me? What does this mean? Another thing I see is the low. You see the low and you see 2000, let's just say 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 14. You see how the low is pretty close to the low back in 2014 and 15? You see that? Now, I was, that was my, that was some of my best years. And I was crushing it 2013, 14, 15, all those times, right? And so we're, we're at the same level of mortgage applications as we were back then, okay? Again, negated. This doesn't mean nothing to me. I could care less what mortgage applications are. When I, when I look at this chart, I think this means nothing to me. And you know what? Every time we see a little bit of a, you know, mortgage, you know, decrease, a little fluctuation of the downside, what do we see? Pending deals, just whoo. Right? Let's get let's get really, really loud for one good second. Let's see how loud you can get. You, loud. One, two, three. Okay, guys, all right, I'll see you guys later. Get loud one good time. Yeah, one, two, three. Okay. What does this mean for your business? Anybody? Lots of biscuits. Not, not biscuit love. What does this mean for your bis business? What does this mean for your biscuits? What's that? For me, what we're getting and how we're presenting it out to currently right now, like the business may mean one thing to me, but not the same to the nature. Right. Opportunity. Okay, I'll tell you what it means for your business. Absolutely nothing. Then why did you spend all that time going through all that? So I can illustrate the facts to you that it means nothing. And that your job is to go out there and be present with what's happening in the market. Use it to your advantage. Because there's two things. When you realize closings happen every day forever, then you're good, right? And you just go out there and you grind and you, you create friendships in the market. You build your database, you close deals, and you continue building, right? That's one part of, that's one layer of your business where you're like, I'm good. But to take it to the seven-figure range, now we have to take that concept and then use it against the market shifts and the market cycles and take advantage of the highs and the lows. That's how you explode your business. We can get to a quarter million a year, 300,000 a year, but how do we get to seven figure, eight figure? Closings will happen every day of your life, by the truckloads, regardless of market conditions. So what matters when it comes to all this? Good to know, doesn't matter day to day. The market always surges back 110%. That's why I put out the video in, in April 2020 that the market was about to explode. Because I know this. Let me prepare. Everybody's scared of getting out of the business. So what are we going to do? And I'm like, how many people can I talk to and get ready for this thing that's fixing to happen? Go against the grain. We're on track right now with this report, 14.5%. Uh, existing home sales, we're on track for 4.6, let's just call it, million sales this year. 
I believe this number is going to change as the year goes on and we see that more sales are happening. We're get, almost getting caught up. You can, you saw the chart. We're almost getting caught up with 2020, whatever it was, 20, 2020. Um, when I think about this, if this holds true, 4.6 million, let's go back in time. When's the last time we had 4.6 million transactions? Well, it was 2012. Now I'll think back to 2012 and I think, wow, that was an amazing year. What an incredible year that was for me personally, my business. None of this matters. You see the worst year was 2008 with 4.1 million sales. And that was the scariest economic moment for real estate we have ever seen. Who knows what's going to happen, but that was the scariest moment. So we're not that far off from that number. Just a scary moment, even at 5 million. We're not that far off from four, the 4 million 2008. It never goes to zero. Enough to go around. Get out there and get it. I'm going to get into some what you should, be, you should be doing and how you should do it. This was my business. This is just to illustrate. 2008, when I got back in the business, 9, 10, 11, 12, I just kind of maintained market share. And then all of a sudden, the market rebounded. And what happened? My business exploded. Why? Because I took advantage of the market cycle being down. I didn't do anything different 2008, 9, 10, 11. I'm just doing my thing, making my calls, sending my postcards, doing my email. Nothing changed. I can only do so much in a day. But why did my business explode? Because it's a snowball. And with the help of the market resurging, it always surges back 110% of the time. If you can really dig in and build your database larger in times when it's low, when it comes back, your business is... And, and so I used to do this seasonally. And I want you to listen to this. When the market went down in the wintertime, because you guys can see, it goes down, seasonal. When it went down, I went all in with trying to make new contacts into my database. Why? Because I know that the next year, when we see that, that surge that happens every year, my business would be bigger that year than it was the year before because I had a bigger database. And so I couldn't really make calls in the summer because I'm so busy selling and closing. And then when I slowed down, I'd get right back on the phone and build it up again for the next year. And every year my income got bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger because I took advantage of the, not only the big cycles, but also the, the little small yearly cycles that you can take advantage of. And this was the result. Number one agent in my entire MLS for eight years in a row is a single agent. This is a screenshot from 2000, uh, 14 to 2021, January to December. So that's eight years right there. 812 sales, crushed everybody. And it was because of what I did when the market was down, not what I did when the market was up. I mean, when's, when's, when's the best time to take advantage of the market? Before it surges or after or when it's surging? Before. So when you guys see the market coming down and interest rates going up, why doesn't that excite you? Yes, this is the moment I've been waiting on. What's the opportunity right now in the market? This is it. You can actually stack listings right now. Why? Because there's still unrealistic sellers who are pricing too high, and that's allowing us to build inventory. Even though it's with sellers that are unrealistic, it's okay. You're there to help them do what they want to do. If they want to go over, here's, here's what I think. Here's why you want to sell. Here's what I think we should price it on based on all that. What do you say? No, I want to go here. Great. As long as you understand the consequences, let's roll. I'm not trying to sell that property. I'm trying to create that relationship for life. I don't care about selling the listing. I care about helping them do what they want to do. We have over 20 listings right now. We've sold so many properties this year so far because we've had inventory. We've been able to stack inventory. Use this moment to stack inventory because we know what's going to happen with mortgage rates. I just told you. They're going to ease down. It's going to open up the market for so many more buyers that can afford. What's going to happen? Any listings you have are going to go. Price is doing work right now. Going up. So if you price something a little high, great. Give it 30 days. And then that price will be a good price. 
This is not rocket science, ladies and gentlemen. This is get out here and grind and build your inventory. Now, how do we get listings? It's right there. That's it. When you take a buyer or a seller at the end of a closing and you say, how'd you pick your agent? The most common answer is going to be, I had a friend in the business. They might have cold called him three years ago and then developed a friendship. They might have met him at an open house. They might have seen him on social media, connected, and ended up creating a friendship. It might be somebody who they grew up with, who are friends. Whatever it is, they created this relationship and created a friendship. The more people you can make friends with in the market, primarily property owners, that's how you get listings. So our job now becomes, how many friends or property owners can we make in the market? And you can only do this one at a time. You can do marketing and you can have an influx of leads, but somebody has to be talking to these leads to develop the relationships. Either you or an ISA or somebody in the organization, there has to have, there's gotta be one-on-one -on -one conversations happening. The only thing between you and let's say a million dollars a year are thousands of one-on-one -on -one conversations with people in your market. The only thing between you and a million dollars a year are thousands of one-on-one -on -one conversations with people in your market. Okay, what you should do every day, let's break this thing on down. Can we get a nice, strong, let's make this the loudest one, biscuit love. Okay, okay, okay. Your daily goal should be to make five new friends or property owners a day. Have you guys been watching me make live calls on YouTube the past couple of weeks? I've done four of them so far. I'm doing them every week that I'm home. I actually did it yesterday, right before I hopped on a plane. You guys see how much fun I'm having? I literally call for like 20 minutes and get like three or four leads every single session. It's super easy. Now, there's so many different ways to have conversations and build relationships and find these five new friends a day with property owners. I'm not going to say, you should do this because that might not work well for you. Although it also might, but I will say this at the end of the day, it's all the same leads and you got to talk to them no matter how you slice it up. Okay. So let's think about it for a second. If I get a Zillow lead, what's the first thing you got to do? Call them. Facebook lead, uh, open house. They came in, they'd signed the thing. I figured out what they want to do. The next day I'm going to, uh, sphere of influence, referrals, circle prospecting for sale by owners, expireds. Can anybody tell me a, a lead generation source that you convert that you don't have to talk to somebody? Yeah, but then they, you, they fill out the form or whatever, and then you talk to them, right? It's the same talking to them. It's all one-on-one -on -one conversations. If you do the YouTube, but then you don't follow up with the people that reach out to you via YouTube or fill out the form, then nothing's going to happen. There's got to be a conversation to be had. Now, I feel better when they've raised their hand that they might want to do something. <laughs> yes. Okay. Oh, okay. Well, every single person in your market has raised their hand by being alive. If they bought a house, give it up for her. If they bought a house, let's say they bought it three years ago, haven't indicated in any way or form that they're interested in doing anything, they've raised their hand by buying the house, saying, hey, I buy houses. I'll sell this house one day and upgrade to something else. And my, my, my kids are going to buy houses. Everybody I know is going to buy a house. You get a house. You get a house. You get a house. <laughs> Thanks, Mom. This wasn't even a joke. Okay. But I'm just trying to help you. If I could just please get in your mind for just one second here before I move on to help you realize that every lead is exactly the same. You classifying it as warm and hot, or this is that lead and this is this lead, makes you have a different tone when you talk to them because you feel comfortable because you've perceived in your mind that this is something different when it's not. 
And if you would take the leads that you're scared to call and pretend like they're the leads that you're not scared to call, you'd have the same results. But not only that, your results will be much larger because there's way more people out there that you're scared to call than the ones that you're not scared to call. So your business actually multiplies. But just watch me make calls every week. Go back and watch old videos and realize how fun this really is. This is what you got in the business for. To talk to people that you don't know to help them buy and sell real estate. So if you're scared to do the one thing that this business is predicated on, how do you expect to succeed? This is what the whole thing is predicated on. You talking to people you don't know to help them buy and sell real estate. So why are you doing everything but the thing that this business is predicated on? I just want to grab some of you guys. Let's go, ah! If you make five new friends a day with property owners in your market, that's going to equal 6,000 over the course of five years. 250 working days a year. Create a weekly email. For your entire deba database, on the same day of the week forever. This is all I did. Called, five new friends, weekly email, all I did. Now think about it. If you make five new friends a day, you create 6,000 new friends in the market. You're doing a weekly email on the same day of the week forever for the five years. How big is your business? You're probably number one in your market. And everybody's going to say, how'd you do it? And you're going to say, well, I went to this thing at City Watery and there's this guy there and he's talking all this stuff and yelling at us and stuff for no reason. And he likes biscuits and stuff. And he said, Make five new friends a day and send a weekly email. Every day, watch the MLS hot sheet. New listings, pendings, closed, expired, withdrawn, canceled. Scan through the data to just understand the daily flows of your local market. That's firsthand information. And it does a lot of things. Number one, you become a market expert in literally weeks if you're paying attention to that every day. You just know stuff. Secondhand, second nature. Second thing it does is it prompts you when you see certain properties to reach out to certain clients. Like, oh, I know a guy that I sold a property to in that neighborhood. I'm going to call him and ask him if he saw this come on the market, see how he's doing. It gives you a reason to reach out to people. Or you might see, see a property that come on the market that is exactly what a buyer that you have is looking for. Boom, you send it to him. You also use it in the weekly email and other marketing uh, avenues to be first to market with information. Right, if, you're, if, you're the, if you're the one that's sending out the new listings or market information that just happened, everybody's going to view you as the one that's most on top of their game. This does so many things for you. When you watch this hot sheet every day for 15 minutes, scan through it, see if there's anything interesting. Go down the rabbit hole with certain properties that you're like, oh, I wonder what the pictures look like on that. I wonder if it has granite like the other one did I sold you know, two months ago. What's the agent on this? Oh, this one's pending. How many time, How many days did it take to go under contract? I'm going to watch that one. I'll see it close in 30 days and I'll see the whole picture. You just become so ingrained with the local market that you are exactly the walking uh, market expert that your clients want by just spending 10, 15 minutes a day watching the hot sheet. Really easy stuff. You're going to make calls from nine to 12. Who are we going to call? Ghostbusters. I don't care who you call. Call whoever you want to call. I'll tell you who I would call. I would go to redxdiscount.com. I would get GeoLeads, Expireds, GeoLeads Plus, Expireds Plus, um, multi-line dialer, even for rent by owners, uh, for sale by owners, whatever. I would load up on that and just call exactly like you see me doing on YouTube. You, by the way, how many other people, I think I know one other guy that does that live. It's real. When I do those calls, I don't even, even know who I'm going to call. I open up Red X right then and just start dialing. I don't know what's going to happen. This is real stuff. You guys can probably tell how real it is when you watch it. And that's what I did for 15 years to build my business. I'd go to redxdiscount.com and get everything they have to offer and, and use it to take my entire market by storm. 
And the weekly email, you can go to startmyweeklyemail.com and see my last six months worth of emails and just copy them. Copy the format, you know, apply it to your stuff and your market and everything. Startmyweeklyemail.com, redxdiscount.com. Calls 9 to 12 every day, do social media all afternoon. I covered it all. You're going to make calls from 9 to 12 to create five new friends a day in the market. Maybe you're calling people that you met on social media the, day, the afternoon before. Maybe it's people that went to your open house this weekend. Maybe it's for sale by owners. Maybe it's a list of uh, owners that you that you, you know, you're one of your clients. Uh, I don't know who you're calling, but you better be calling somebody or nothing's going to happen. Have fun with it. How you doing today? Cool, me too. I'm enjoying the day. Isn't it gorgeous? Great. Well, listen, I don't want to take up too much of your time. I saw that you were looking at a property online. I want to see if there's anything I can do to help you with that. How hard is that? Hey, this is, is this Mr. Johnson? Hey, Mr. Johnson, Ricky Kruth, whatever real estate company here in Nashville, right down the road from you. How you doing today? Cool, me too. I'm enjoying the day. Isn't it gorgeous? Great. Well, listen, I want to take up too much of your time, but a house right around the corner from you just sold. Just calling to see if you knew about that and see if there's anything in the world I could do for you today. No? Cool. Is there an agent you would work with if you were to do something? No? Well, here I am. I'm sure at some point in the future, you're going to buy or sell something in your life, right? Yeah, cool. Listen, I'd love the opportunity to work with you when that day comes. Would you borrow it if I just stayed in touch with you? Yeah? Cool. What's a good email? Is this your cell number? Good. I'm going to stay in touch with you via email. If there's ever anything I can do for you, please reach out. Again, my name is Ricky Carruth. Right here, right down the road from you. You know, we'll talk to you soon. You have a good one. Tell everybody I said hello. How hard is that? Huh? Oh, I was like, I heard baby. Oh, man, I could continue just breaking that. The transitions, man, like. I'm enjoying the days in the gorgeous. Uh, yeah. Uh, well, well, cool. Well, listen, the transition. Uh, uh, well, listen, I don't want to take up too much of your time today, but there's the transition, right? You tell them what you came to tell them. Is there anything I do to help you? No? Transition. Cool. Well, is there an agent you would work with if you were to do something? There's a beginning. There's a transition. There's a body. There's a transition. There's an end. These are my scripts that I came up with. I didn't get this off TomFerry.com. I had a real estate license. I made 100,000 calls and I developed these myself. Are there any coaches out there that sell scripts that they didn't get from another coach? I am. All right, Th this one, th here's the nail in the coffin. If you wanna close one deal a week, you need 15 to 20 active buyers and sellers at all times. And what I did was two a week. That's 100 deals a, a year. I always had 25 plus active buyers and sellers at all times. Simple stuff. And once you, the, here's the dream I want to sell you right here. When you build your database up to the point where you're making the money you want to make, you don't have to prospect anymore. You can turn that key off and now you're going to close around 1% of your database a year with no prospecting. So when you see people who get up to 150,000 a year, 250,000 a year, and that's all they ever make, 250, 250, 250, 250, that's because they built their database up to 250, and then they quit building the database, they just live off their database. And they wonder why they're not exploding. Well, you quit building your business. I quit building my database when I got to 10,000. I was closing 100 deals a year. I quit, that was 2017. I quit prospecting. I continued to close 100 deals every year after. Just a weekly email, no social media, no this, no that, nothing. Just a weekly email, no following up, checking on people, how you doing, all that stuff. Just weekly email, calls come in, help them buy and sell. That's the kind of business I wanted to build, a residual business that doesn't involve me just chasing, chasing, chasing. I don't want my clients chasing me. This is the light at the end of the tunnel. This is the end of the rainbow. This is the dream I want to sell you, that if you work really hard, to talk to enough property owners to build that database up, there will come a time when you don't have to prospect anymore and you're closing the amount of deals you want to close. And guess what? They're not interviewing three agents. They're calling one agent at that point in your career, you, because you've already done business or they refer from somebody that, that loves 
your service. Now, this is a beautiful place to be. When you're working very little, you're doing a weekly email, you're closing 100 deals a year with no chasing, no prospecting, no nothing, no expenses. Totally possible for every single person in this room. Of course, I can't get all the way into it, but if you want to dive into all my scripts, all my free courses, all that stuff, it's right there. Zero to diamond.com. Oh, ZTD survey, zero to diamond. Seven out of 10 agents that go through the 60 day challenge, get more listings and close more deals. That's pretty good. 87% have better time management. Pretty good. 75% read more. This is a big one. 98.8% say they enjoy being a real estate agent more. 0.00000457 found their significant other. Ricky, I got 30 actives under contracts and coming soon. Listings right now after 12 months of your method. I'm at the love of my life through ZTD. Will you marry us? Yeah, I'm going to die. It's a that's that that's some biscuit love i said are you guys are you kidding me are y'all engaged not nah, dead serious man not nah, yet but soon we met six months ago through ztd huh. zero to diamond that's on the sweat who said that oh you did oh yeah yeah, Georgia Bulldog. Could, I wouldn't have known that you would have said that. You probably went to Georgia. I'm just kidding. I love Georgia. Just kidding again. Anyways, for as rudely interrupted, just kidding again. Will you marry us? I said, yeah, I'll marry you. So we did it all. It was an incredible ceremony. All the haters are going to say it's fake. But the thing is, they didn't want, they didn't want to show their faces. But I had to go get uh, ordained and all that. It was wild. We did it like in a, at a dog park as you can see in the background. What is the end goal for real estate agents? Like the end, end goal. To build a business that creates residual clients, right? That, that's the holy grail of your real estate business. But like, what's the end, end goal? Buy real estate. Buy real estate. How many people here own investment property? I'll rephrase. How many people do not own investment property? It's okay. This is the nest. We can be, this is the safe zone. What's so funny is the amount of agents who go out and try to convince people to buy real estate who don't own real estate themselves. Go buy some real estate. Go get some of your product. It'll help you sell more real estate when you own real estate. But the goal here, guys, is to buy and hold. I flip, whatever. You can flip properties, you can wholesale, you can do a lot of different things. But I believe that the 100 plus properties I flipped, if I would have kept the best 30 of them, I'd be way wealthier. Have way more cash flow and I'd, that'd be much more wealthier. I wish I would have kept the best 30 properties. Live and learn. My goal this year is to buy 100 million worth. So if you guys, that's my Instagram handle. I answer every single DM. How many people here have DM'd me at one point in their life? Keep your hand up if you never got a response from me. Anybody never get a response from me? No, because I answer every single message myself. I don't have an assistant. Nobody, everybody's like, is this really you? And then I'm like, take a picture. Message me if you guys have Properties. I'm interested in multifamily, commercial, whatever. Send it to me. I invest in these deals and we can invest in these deals together. You can come in with us on these deals. 
Here's my book. This is everything I learned through the market crash when I came back. I wrote it in 2017. So this was after I came back from the crash and then made it and had it for three or four years. This isn't something I wrote right after. This was a decade after. Okay, here we go. Text me here, chance to win a signed copy. Also, I'm gonna give away a couple of one-on-one -on -one calls. And also today's slides. If you want all the data that I shared today on the slides, text me here. Text me the word book. And I'll make sure to hook you guys up. You can just text, instead of just writing the number down, you just put in your phone and then just hit the text button. I'll text you later. I'll just write the number down and I'll save it. Just kidding. It's Alabama jokes. It's y'all don't you, nobody here gets that. Look at that YouTube like emotion at the top there. That's my social medias. All right, I'm gonna leave you guys with this. Always value relationships over transactions. When I step into a listing appointment, we're talking to a buyer, I don't care if they buy or sell. When I call an expired, I'm not trying to list the property. I'm using the property as an excuse to get into a conversation to see if I can get to know this person for a second to see exactly what it is that they want to do and why. That's it. Try to make a connection, see what they want to do, what I can do to help them, why they want to do it, when they want to do it, how they want to do it. All right, I'm, 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 I'm a doctor. I'm a Dr. Carruth. When you walk into a doctor and say, my stomach hurts, they don't just lay you down and just slice your stomach open and say, what's going on in there? They say, well, does it hurt when you do this? Okay, they start thinking, what could this be? They start running tests. They put you through machines. They take your blood. They figure out what's going on. And then they say, okay, here's what we need to do about that. You guys need to run your real estate businesses the same way. When they say they want to sell, it's like, okay, well, tell me more about this. Why is it exactly that you want to sell? When do you want to sell? People don't wake up one day and say, I want to buy or sell property for no reason. There's something else going on behind the scenes in their life that's way bigger than the transaction. And if you can tap into that, that's when you start really building a real business and you really start truly helping people using your services. The power of four. This is something that just kept coming up. The number four. What was it? 8% of agents last year up to the halfway point uh, sold four or more properties. 8% of the real estate community in the U.S. I said, oh, okay, four. When I ask an agent how many active buyers and sellers you're working with, the most common answer is four which statistically is 0.8. So when you got four buyers or sellers you're working with, just realize you're working on nothing. Remember, 15 to 20 is one deal a week. 25 plus is two deals a week. Four is zero, statistically. Your business is not going to surge working with four or five active buyers and sellers. Not gonna happen. And every time I do a big presentation, a Zoom call, I could be talking to 1,000 agents, 2,000 agents, whatever it is. I could be talking to four agents. I could be talking to 20 agents. And I say, here's what you need to do. Here's why you need to do it. So go do it. Who's going to take the challenge? And everybody's like, yeah. The next week, we sit down. I say, who all did it? Guess how many people? It doesn't matter if I'm talking to 2,000, 5,000, 10,000, four people every time. And when you think about after a week, you're like, oh, okay, but it takes a decade. So what I want you to visualize is to take not only what I've shared with you here today and my story and the data and what I, how I feel strongly about how you should build your business, but also from other people that you look up to and admire and have sold a lot of property and put together your game plan specific to you that you're going to stick to for the next 10 years to do something really special. But what I want to do is, is, I want whoever in here, right? If you're going to be one of the four, 
that's going to take this information and from other people and mold it into something to really go out there and do something special. If you're going to be one of the four people, make as much noise as you can. What about the intro? Okay, now, two things. Number one, that was weak because of this table. And there can only be four of you. I said four. So let's do it again. One, two, three. Too many. There's only four people that are going to go out there and do it. All right. Cool, cool, cool. I want to take a couple of questions, two, three at the most. So if you guys have questions, just raise your hand. But I'm going to conclude the actual presentation. So thank you guys so much for listening. Hey. There we go. Does anybody have any questions before we go through all this? Okay, cool. Okay. What's been the hardest thing for you to do since you started? Where you are now? Don't say Alabama football. <laughs> nah, it's, I don't. I can't say that here. Um, so, here's the thing, man. Regardless of how great, like, any of these agents are, or the superstars on TV, uh, you know, these big, like, guys that are doing, the ladies that are doing just such amazing things, right? I don't care who you are. The first three to six to 12 to 18 months was super hard, right? And everybody goes through the same thing, okay? You go through excitement. I'm in this business. It's sky's the limit. This is amazing. I'm my own boss. I can make my own money. I can do my own thing. Nobody's going to tell me anything. And you come out of this really high high. And then after a couple of weeks, you kind of start to get a little bit frustrated because there's a mountain of knowledge and you realize you're not going to learn it in a day. And then after a couple of months of really busting your ass and not selling anything, you become very disappointed. So you start out really, really high. And then you, and then after a couple of months, you're in this really low, low. And a lot of people quit right there. But the future top producers say, oh, okay, this is a lot harder than I thought it was going to be. You know what? If he's doing it, if he's doing it, if she's doing it, if they're doing it, I can do it. So let me get right back out here and, and make it happen. Because if they can do it, I can do it. That's what the future top producers say. So then guess what? They come off that disappointing low and they come back on another high. But it's not as high as the first high. And then they, they, they experience another low, but it's not as low as the first low. And so you, you have these big emotional swings in the beginning that as you continue to move forward and understand the, re the reality of the situation, then it gets a little better and you sort of become level-headed and I get so much excited about things and you don't get so disappointed about things either and get to a place where you try to stay pretty balanced and not get overly excited or overly discouraged. Yeah, those, swing those emotional swings are tough. And every, any business you get into, it starts all over. So when I got into coaching, here I am spending 100000 a year out of my pocket losing it because I'm coaching for free, spending 80% of my time on a business that loses six-figure, neglecting my seven-figure business that took me a decade and a half to build. I'm like, oh, I'm just going to throw this million-dollar business away and go do this business that I lose six-figure on every year? That was discouraging. That was tough. I thought about quitting a couple times, but every time I would get a message from one of you saying, you know, I'm, I've got 10 listings in the last month because of what you're telling me and I was doing nothing or I was about to quit the business. How many people here, raise of hands, would have quit? What you, you, would you even be in the business right now if it wasn't for Zero to Diamond? Raise your hand if you actually wouldn't be in the business if it wasn't for Zero to Diamond. Stand up, actually. I want to see like real numbers. So, like, the thing is, is, like, you guys is kind of what keeps me going. So the, the mission statement of Zero to Diamond and why it's 100% completely free is because my goal is to help reduce the failure rate in the real estate industry one agent at a time. It's been the mission statement from day one. It's always going to be the mission statement. It's always going to be free. And I'm always going to continue to bring more and more value to the program. Um, you want me to say it? You got to say it. Okay. Okay. Give it up for Biscuit Love. Okay. All right. But you just got to fight through whatever it is. I'll, I'll tell you this before I go to one more question. 
when I lost everything and went back to roofing houses, serving tables at night, working on an oil rig, not knowing kind of really kind of uncertain what my future was. Some people were like, how was your mental health during that time? I was like, I was fine. Because one, I knew that I, in my mid twenties, uh, there were guys that were 60, 50 and 60 that went through the same thing. And I was like, thank God I wasn't 60, 50 or 60. And I was like, the lessons I learned here is going to help me really crush it. I knew that long term. The second thing was, I tell this to part-time agents who just hate their job and want to go full-time. I just want to get out of my job. I hate this. I'm like, okay, well, how's your life going to be different? You wake up right now and you work, work, work. You go home, you go to bed, you do it again the next day, right? When you get in real estate and do it full-time, what are you going to be doing every day? Get up early, work, 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 go home, do it again the next day. Your life's not going to change much at all. So when I lost everything, nothing changed. I was waking up early, working as hard as I could on real estate. When I got out of that, I woke up the next day and got on a roof. It doesn't matter to me what I'm doing. I'm going to get up and work every day. I could lose everything today and it doesn't matter. I had $200,000 worth of Bitcoin stolen from me back a couple Septembers ago. My wife was like, you need to do it. You, like, so, you're, you're weird. Because, because I was sitting there and I was watching the money go down. It's 200000 and and I just didn't care. I didn't care. I could charge to come here. I don't care about money. There was a guy, uh, I was helping him and stuff, and, and I was like, man, you're crushing a good job. He's like, yeah, man, you can congratulate me after I make a sale or something, make some money off of me. I said, I don't care about that. I could go double my real estate portfolio right now. Like, I'm on a mission to buy $100 million. Um, That's through partnerships, syndications, all kinds of things. I got a lot of different partners. My personal real estate portfolio, I could double it in the next six months. I have so much equity that I haven't tapped into. Properties don't free and clear. And I have zero interest. Like I'm not motivated to go double that or even start charging $25,000 a pop for coaching that I could do. Zero interest. Money doesn't do it for me. It's getting up and working hard and helping people. Okay. One more right here. Hey, Ricky. So, um, I man, Hey, <laughs> so I've been listening to you and, uh, Tom Ferry on YouTube for about a year now. I'm a new agent. I got about That's a weird combination of business. Yeah, it sure is. Yeah. Tom Ferry's got more of an aggressive style and, uh, you can no doubt. have a uh, relationship building style. And I find yeah. that, um, tr your style fits me better. Um, I I'm more comfortable trying to build relationships than aggressively close. So, this is kind of an aggress aggressive question. I've always wanted to ask you this. This is getting weirder by the uh, second. <laughs> Would you do a live co cold call session with me? Do what? Would you do a live yeah. call session where you mentor me, you listen to me, make yeah. calls, boomtown calls or mojo calls and just tell me, help me through that. I appreciate it. Yeah. Just, um, yeah, just DM me. Okay. DM me on Instagram and say, hey, I'm the weird guy up front that talked about being aggressive and... <laughs> All right, one more. Thanks, Rick. You're welcome. Hello, Rick. Hey, how you doing back there? Oh, I'm a new agent. I've been in the business for a year now. And I just want to know, um, what challenges did you have to overcome to just stay consistent? Well, I grew up roofing houses, right? So what did you grow up doing? Here. What's up? Healthcare. Healthcare. And so, do you ever want to go back to healthcare? No. Okay. Okay. There you go. Like, if you don't want to go back, if you don't want to move forward, then you got to be consistent. There has to be a routine in place. So, the challenge for me is I'm a single mom. I have four children. Mm -hmm. And you know, like when just life happens, you know, but I understand that they say, yo, why it has to be. So what happens? Does your kids go to school? Do they go to daycare? Or wh what hours throughout the week can you 100% dedicate to real estate and building your business? School hours. But like when kids get sick. No, I understand. I'm not talking about like things that happen out of the ordinary. I'm saying generally, like, generally speaking, your kid, they, they're all enough to go to school and daycare, right? Yes, I homeschool some. Okay. So I could, but I could do 
here's where here's where we're going with it, right? With anybody, when you're trying to break through from part time to full time, you're a single mom, you're whatever your situation is, right? You're a brand new agent, and you're you're trying to figure out, okay, what's the next steps? Here's step one: you have to map out your week. And you have to put the times that you can 100% dedicate to building your real estate business. If there's no time allocated to building your real estate business, you're not going to have a business. So whether it's one hour a day that you 100%, no distractions, this is my hour to focus on whatever it is you're focusing on to build your business, you have to have that. Do you have that? No. That's step one. Now, if you have that in place and your kid gets sick, then that's more important than building your business right this second. That's okay. Right. But when you, you know, you, when you, when the kid's better and goes back to school, then you're right back on your schedule. Right. So you got to be even better than most people having four kids and having to be agile with your schedule to not allow life's situations to throw you off. You know, if you have a bad week, don't let it throw you off for the next week when nobody's at home. Stay on schedule. You might have to build your business slower than most people because of your situation. Who cares? Doesn't matter if it takes a year, two year, three year, four year, five year. It doesn't matter. You got into this to do it for 30 years. Take your time. Enjoy this part of the process. Your kids are going to be grown and gone in a blink of an eye. You got this. Give it up for her. Thank you. Hey, I don't have a mic, but we're getting that. Hey, a big shout out to the one, the only one, get Oh, Thank you, Dennis. We love you. Thank you so much. If you reference, he does this for free for us. This event does cost a lot, but this man right here is genuine. He is true. He is somebody that I learned from, and I'm grateful for you. So thank you so much for being here. I hope everybody awesome. left today with one, one nugget, two, three, four nuggets. Look. I-35 with a top down, quit to tell a hater they should get